Hi, I'd like to do a little number on protons, neutrons, and electrons, specifically what they are, where they're located, and how many of them are in a species. Well, I made a little entry here of a uh, lithium, as according to the periodic table of the elements. It's element number three, and the periodic table of the elements has that integer value three there. And it's what we call the atomic number. So atomic number. And frankly, I've never appreciated the name because atomic number sounds like a label to me. And while it's true that the periodic table of the elements is arranged according to atomic number, it has its odd shape because we keep the counting. According to the periodic table of the elements, we count one, two, so we go left to right. Then it's like hitting enter on a word processor. We drop down and go three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten go back and hit 11 and then we just continue. But there's more significance to atomic number and that is it's telling us the number of protons present inside the atom. And P is a nice little one letter symbol for proton. And the charge on a proton is positive. Let me make a little note here off to the side. Protons are positively charged particles. Now, with lithium, the symbol is Li for lithium. Periodic table of the elements typically says Li. Many good periodic tables say lithium for the name underneath. And lithium automatically implies you have three protons. If you have three protons, it's lithium. If you have four protons, it's something else. It's beryllium. If you have six, it's carbon. So number of protons, lithium, they're synonymous. Now something else that's going on here is we can tell people how many electrons are inside the species. Now if I write lithium as Li, or I write out the name lithium, but I'll stick with Li, and I don't put a charge on it, and what's meant by a charge is you don't see me putting a positive sign next to here or anything else, then it's neutral, and that means that the number of positive charges equal the number of negative charges. So in a lithium atom, because it's neutral, we call it an atom, we're going to have three protons because it's element number three, and we're going to have three electrons. The positive charges, the negative charges are equal, they cancel. So we have ourselves lithium. We don't necessarily have to have lithium. Lithium's not real stable in air. It reacts with air to form lithium hydroxide or lithium oxide. And so lithium will go ahead and do something with its electrons. Since it's in group number one, we'll find out shortly it's going to lose one electron. When it loses one, it's no longer a lithium atom, it's changed. We call it a lithium ion. The term ion means a charged particle. Now lithium, because it's in group one, tends to lose one, is actually going to take on the symbol Li, and then we do superscript and call it plus, lithium plus. Now the reason it's lithium plus, but I've been saying that it goes ahead and loses an electron, is because Li implies it's lithium and has three protons three protons. If the plus sign were not there and it was lithium, we would have three electrons. But I happen to know it's typical that lithium's going to lose an electron and now only be two electrons in its system. Look what's happening. Three positive charges, two negative charges, three positives, two negatives, they don't cancel, and the net is plus one. A little figure on the center board shows plus three charges, three protons, a couple of electrons out here some way. Well, you could do the cancellation thing and say, this electron cancels with that proton. This electron cancels with this proton, and we're left with a net charge of plus one, a lithium ion. So lithium plus has three protons, two electrons. Find aluminum on your periodic table of the elements. It is element number 13. So right away, because lithium is element number 13, I can go ahead and deduce it has 13 protons. Now this aluminum has become the aluminum ion, and it has lost three electrons. And while we're looking at this, go ahead and make a note. Even though it says three plus, it hasn't gained three of anything. The three plus is it has lost three negative charges. In other words, it's lost three electrons. So what we have is 13 electrons if it's neutral, but it has lost three. So we have ourselves a system that has 13 protons, 10 electrons. Please go ahead and try this one. An oxygen atom, O, but now we put a two minus charge on here. So it has changed. We call it the oxide ion. Now oxygen gains two electrons. 
2 minus means that it's gained two negative charges. Element number. Oxygen's element number eight, so it has eight protons. If it had no charge on there, eight electrons. But the two minus says it's gained two. So a couple of electrons, eight protons, 10 electrons. This is the number of protons and electrons. Let's do an exercise where we talk about the number of neutrons. The periodic table of the elements doesn't directly tell us how many neutrons are in a species. As a matter of fact, that number that sits below the symbol in this periodic table is not an integer. For example, take a look at carbon towards the top right, and you see that that number is not 12, it's 12.011. That's what we call the average mass. Now that's an average of the total particles in the nucleus, meaning carbon has an average of 12.011. Some carbon might be carbon 12, Six protons, six neutrons. Six plus six is 12. Some carbon is 14. And then there's a little bit of some others, like 15, 16. Those aren't stable as well as 14. Carbon 12 is stable. So we've got ourselves an average number up there. Somebody needs to tell us some information, such as, I have a sample and I've separated it and it contains some carbon 12. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Carbon 12. It's spoken as carbon 12. Sometimes it's written like this. People will go ahead and put the symbol for carbon, C. In the top left, they'll tell you 12, which is called the mass number. Mass number. And this mass number is simply the number of protons plus neutrons. Both the protons and the neutrons reside inside the nucleus, the center of the atom. The six in the bottom left is rather redundant. We don't need to put that at all because the letter C tells us that it's the element carbon and carbon's element number six, six protons. But we have a redundancy here. Sometimes we'll put the six, other times we'll just go, nah, we know it, it's six. Leave it off there. This is the number of protons. So if carbon is specified to be carbon 12, this is a sample that's been isolated, it's got mass of 12. We know that it has six protons because it's carbon element number six. And the number of neutrons comes from this top number, 12 minus 6. Would you please tell me how many protons, neutrons, and electrons are in this? I didn't put the 6 in the bottom left of the carbon because it's redundant. I'm indicating that this is carbon 14 and it has a charge on it. Go ahead and take a moment and fill in number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. It's element number six, it's carbon. It has six protons. The number of neutrons is got at from the mass number. I'm gonna make a note out here that the 14 is the number of protons plus neutrons, but we know that there's six protons, so we subtract and get eight. The number of electrons. Carbon is element number six, so if it did not have a charge on it, cover that up, you would have six protons, but this has a four minus charge. So it's going to be 6, and is it plus 4 or minus 4? The minus means that it has gained electrons, and it's gained 4 of them, so it has 10 electrons. Where are these particles? Well, because of some experiments done by chemists and physicists about 100 years ago, we find that a lot of the mass in the atom is very, 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 very compact, and we call it the nucleus. Nucleus. And this nucleus contains protons and neutrons. Outside the nucleus, mostly empty space for the atom, we find our electrons. And electrons are moving around in some wave-like fashion in a region of space. You can think of nice little models. You can say electrons are negatively charged. The uh, nucleus is positively charged because protons are positive. Neutrons are neutral, so there's a nice attraction there. If you're thinking maybe the electron crashes down into the nucleus, positive and negative and they get together, we find that it doesn't happen because electrons have too much kinetic energy, too much energy of motion. Think of maybe the moon revolving around the Earth. It's not spiraling in. It's got momentum. So the electron's got momentum. Mass times velocity, it's hauling. If you're thinking maybe the electron can leave, you're absolutely right. 
because we can easily bring something else up next to this system and pull the electron away, and that's chemistry. Chemistry is really the give and take of electrons. Well, the nucleus has a great mass, and the uh, electrons are out here. Large volume, not a lot of mass.